It's V from Movies Hunter, here to enlighten your lives with a little film trivia. Today, we are talking about the 2007 gem, Teeth, a film that combines fantasy, comedy, and horror to create the perfect storm of what the fuck mess. So, in the opening scene, we see a happily married couple living their best life. Or so they think. They are lounging outside their house, surrounded by their blended family of step-siblings and half-siblings. But wait, what's this? Little Brad, the golden child, is flashing his baby carrot at his stepsister Dawn and demanding she do the same. Oh, the innocence of youth. But before we can fully process the absurdity of the scene, Brad starts swelling. He has cut his finger and is now bleeding all over the place. Fast forward a few years and we see that Dawn has grown up to be the poster child for The Promise, a group that encourages young children to save their innocence for their one true love. Meanwhile, her stepbro, Brad, has turned into the exact opposite, a loud, obnoxious teenager. But what caused this drastic change in the siblings? We'll have to wait and find out. But in the meantime, Dawn meets a cute guy named Toby through her friends and goes home to check on her sick mother. Meanwhile, Brad is off doing, well, whatever Brad does. In class, the teacher is schooling the students on the male reproductive organs like it's the easiest thing in the world. But when it comes to the girls' reproductive organs, the teacher starts sweating bullets. It's like they were radioactive or something. The school administration has even gone so far as to cover up the diagram of the female parts because heaven forbid anyone actually learn about them. But of course, when a student bravely raises their hand to ask, what the fuck, the teacher is at a complete loss for words. Meanwhile, Dawn is not bothered by the decision in the slightest and says something like, females are different because they have an inherent modesty which is part of their nature. Like, excuse me. Except for Toby, everyone else is laughing at her. Later on, Toby, Dawn, and their oh-so-exciting group of friends decide to embark on the thrilling journey of going to the movies. At the theater, Toby and Dawn can't seem to keep their eyes off each other, sparking flying everywhere. It's almost too much to handle. <whistles> Later that night, Dawn gets a little carried away with her thoughts and starts imagining her and Toby getting hitched and all the wild and crazy things that come with marriage. Relatable. And let's just say, things get a little heated. But as soon as she snaps out of it, she reminds herself of her promise to stay pure and regrets her actions. The next day at school, Dawn musters up the courage to confess her impure thoughts to Toby. <laughs> okay, to her surprise, Toby admits to having have had similar thoughts about her. So they make a pact to keep their distance from now on, because that seems to always solve the problem. Meanwhile, Dawn overhears Brad and his girlfriend, Melanie, getting into a heated argument. So the next day, Dawn tries talking to Brad, but he is too busy being a great age jerk to pay her any attention. He even expresses his desperate desire to romance her. Frustrated, Dawn decides to take a dip in the lake with Toby because nothing says, I'm over it like a good old fashioned swim. But wait, what's this? Toby confesses that he has been fantasizing about Dawn in the buff, and before you know it, they are locked in a steamy makeout session. But just as things start to heat up, Dawn remembers the whole promise of purity thing and puts the brakes on. But Toby can't control himself and follow her to a nearby cave where things take a turn for the worst. Toby, being the gentleman that he is, doesn't take no for an answer and gets physical. Dawn tries to stop him, but he is too strong, and before she knows it, he is smacking her head on the ground and taking advantage of her. But just as things are getting really dire, Toby cries out in pain and rolls off of her. And the reason for his sudden change of heart? Well, let's just say that Toby's little Toby is no longer little. Ouch. Toby, in complete shock and panic, jumps into the lake like it's the only logical thing to do in this situation. Dawn, meanwhile, is horrified by the incident and can't believe her eyes. She tries calling for Toby, but when he doesn't respond, she does the smart thing and runs away from the scene. Dawn returns home, quietly heads to her room, and tries to make sense of what just happened. But let's be real, she's never gonna understand it. I don't, do you? If you don't, then subscribe to the channel. The next day, she attempts to give a talk on the virtue of purity, but she is still too confused and traumatized to continue. At a school dance, she meets her classmate Ryan and they chat for a bit. He offers to drive her home and asks her out on a date. But Dawn, understandably, wants to steer clear of boys for a while. But Ryan's not one to take no for an answer, so he goes to Dawn's house to try and convince her. Unfortunately, Brad answers the door, bing, and decides to play big brother. He threatens Ryan, punches him in the face, and warns him to stay away from his sister. 
Later on, Dawn returns to the lake and sees Toby's Jeep still there. She swims to the cave ready for a romantic reunion, but instead screams in horror when she sees a freshwater crab crawling on Toby's now rotting baby carrot. I mean, who even knows what's going on anymore? But Dawn, being the curious little mink she is, decides to investigate what the hell is wrong with her. So she turns to the internet for answers and comes across the myth of Vagina de Tata. Yes, you heard that right. Toothed Lady Bits. According to the myth, a hero must battle this terrifying creature and break her power. Dawn, understandably, is horrified and runs straight to her gynecologist called, let's call him Dr. God God, pleading for him to check and make sure she doesn't have any adaptations. But the good doctor, not understanding a damn thing, tells her she's just going through womanhood and nothing more and then proceeds to invade her personal space without even a glove on. I mean, what even is this movie? Dawn is in so much pain now, she's practically begging for a morphine drip. But the doctor, in all his infinite wisdom, tells her to just breathe through it. Yeah, because that's totally going to work. But Dawn, being the obedient patient that she is, panics, and suddenly, something grabs hold of the doctor's finger. Oh, after a brief struggle, the doctor manages to free his hand, only to find that his fingers have been neatly severed. As Dawn flees the scene in horror, the doctor can only scream, Vagina Ardentatar! As Dawn cycles back home, she sees several police vehicles passing her, and being the nosy person she is, she decides to investigate. And what does she find? Toby's dead body floating in the lake. But it gets better. When she returns home, she finds her dear mother unconscious on the floor, and Brad and Melanie in the middle of a rom-com worthy make-out session. Dawn, being the responsible adult that she is, calls an ambulance and rushes her mother to the hospital. Later, she wakes up from a nightmare at the hospital and Bill tells her to go home and get some rest. But instead, she goes to Ryan's house and breaks down in front of him. She feels guilty for Toby's death and blames herself for not looking after her mother. She reveals to Ryan that she is Vajana Dentata and only a hero can save her now. But Ryan, being the clueless man that he is, tries to console her, not understanding a word of what she's just said. Now, as Dawn soaks in the tub, Ryan slyly slips a pill into her hand, saying it's something her mom takes to calm her nerves. He then sets the mood with candles and a bottle of wine, because nothing says romantic like drugging someone. Dawn, however, has other plans and decides to head to the police station to turn herself in. But Ryan, being the charming hero he is, convinces her to spend the night with him and even offers her a drink. Little does she know, that drink is spiked with something that's causing her to feel dizzy and disoriented. Ryan then takes advantage of the situation and starts getting frisky. Dawn warns him that he might get hurt, but he brushes it off and tells her he is her hero who is going to conquer her. It's only then that Dawn realizes that when she's relaxed and consenting, her teeth don't engage. Meanwhile, the doctors find some mysterious teeth in Toby's body. It seems to be a mix of shark and eel teeth, but the test reveals they actually belong to a human. The next morning, Ryan and Dawn continue their steamy love affair, but just as things are getting good, Ryan's friend calls and ruins the mood. Ryan, being the arrogant jerk he is, brags about his conquest to his buddy, revealing that the whole thing was just a bet. Dawn, understandably, loses her cool and bites off Ryan's little buddy in retaliation. Ryan cries out in pain, but Dawn walks away without a second thought. Meanwhile, Dawn goes to the hospital and check on her poor mother, who has been neglected by her own son, Brad. Speaking of Brad, Bill finally loses it with him and tells him to pack his bags and get out. But Brad, being the entitled Brad he is, fights back, revealing that he has been harboring a secret crush on Dawn this whole time. Bill and Melanie, feeling guilty, go to the hospital to check on Dawn's mom, only to find out that she passed away. Melanie apologizes to Dawn and confesses that Brad told her to ignore her mother's pleas for help. Dawn, understandably, is devastated and goes home to exact her revenge on Brad. She puts on some makeup and goes into Brad's room, ready to unleash her seductive powers. Brad, being the clueless buffoon he is, can't figure out what the hell is going on. But Dawn, being the master of seduction, keeps turning up the heat. Eventually, Brad succumbs to her seductive ways and gets in the mood. But before things can get too steamy, Dawn sinks her teeth into Brad's little buddy, biting it clean in half. Brad, in shack campaign, sends his trusty pooch to attack Dawn, but instead the dog scarfs down Brad's severed member like it's a tasty treat. Dawn, feeling victorious right here and with a taste for blood, leaves Brad in a state of despair. She then decides to leave home for good, but as fate would have it, her tire gets punctured on the way out of town. 
so she starts hitchhiking and who should pick her up but a creepy old man. After a few hours of driving, Dawn wakes up at a gas station in the middle of nowhere. When she tries to leave, the old man locks the door and starts licking his lips. Dawn, being the smart cookie she is, realizes what's about to go down, but instead of freaking out, she gives the old man a seductive smile and says, Bring it on, grandpa. I think we can all guess what happens next, but yeah, that's it. This is the story of tea. See you in the next hunt.